We are a very small inner city school. We have 15 classrooms K to 5. Very diverse. We typically hover between the high 80s, low 90s percent poverty rate. This group of students we found does not learn well from whole class lessons. We've never used the QFT as a formative assessment before, so I'm interested to see how that helps to drive where we're going next. Before we begin, we're going to remind ourselves of the rules of the question formulation technique. As you read through these rules, I want you to think about which one is going to be difficult for you today. So rule number one, ask as many questions as you can. Do not stop until time is up. Do not stop and say, I did oh, five questions, I'm good, we're good. And you need to keep going until the timer runs out. Rule number two, you're going to change every statement into a question. Rule number three, this is for the scribe. You need to write down every question exactly as it is asked. Do not stop to judge, discuss, or answer any of the questions. While we're in the questioning part, we are not going to discuss. Very important with fourth graders to go over the rules because they have a very hard time not talking through the questioning. Um, even going over the rules, they will still have some discussion here and there. But I think for the scribe especially, it's important, um, it's important to remind the students each time that if they have a question that is similar to a question that's already on there, it doesn't matter to put it down exactly as it's stated by the new person. Um, because oftentimes at this age, they'll say, we already asked that, and they'll move on without adding that question on. Today, your cue focus is on a paper that's coming to your group. It will not be up on the board because it is a picture, an image. So as soon as you have your cue, your question focus, you may begin producing questions. When I was thinking about this question focus, I was really trying to be careful of what I was giving to them because I really want to find out what they do know from uh, just identifying fractions. We've done very little with equivalent fractions. Um, we've talked a little bit about adding and subtracting fractions through an adjective noun idea, so that three-fifths plus two-fifths is just like three apples plus two apples. So we haven't actually instructed anything with fractions. So I'm interested to see what they can bring as questions to make me understand where they're still stuck or what they still don't know. Why, why are some of the fractions circled and the rest of the fractions are, are not? Why is the circle shaded into five eighths? Why is there eight shaded at five? Why is the circle shaded? The questioning certainly gets deeper as they keep going. Um, with fourth graders, it's important to push them to stick with the time and not stop after they get to a certain number or not stop after a few minutes, that to really keep going and have more questions than there's time for because that's where we get to some really deep thinking. Can we make our own fractions out of it? The next step in this process is to identify which of your questions are open-ended questions and which of your questions are closed-ended questions. So as a group together, I would like you to reread your questions and decide if your question is open-ended, then you will put an O, or if your question is closed-ended, and you would put a they really have started to get a feel for um, the, the why questions and the is questions. Um, so they've started to really identify what uh, is a great skill of knowing what kinds of questions you need to ask and what kinds of questions will get you certain answers. Like explain it really well with a lot of details so that it would probably be um, a little hard to um, figure one? out. Open-ended. The open-ended, well, you'll need to explain it with a lot of detail. What is a closed-ended question, Thomas? Where it's either a yes or a no, or something that's only like one or two words in the answer. 
Okay. If you get to a question that you don't know the answer to, that doesn't mean it's open. Why are their fractions open? Are these numbers Are these, are these numbers equal, equal to, to each, each other? other? Yes or no, so close. I think with the open and close, it's important at this level to, to do it often so that they understand it a little bit more. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to choose one open-ended question and change that to a closed-ended question. Remember that you are going to add this to the bottom of your list and number it the next in line. Oh, we can turn it, um, why are there lines? You can turn it to, are there lines? Yes. So why are they lines? What are they lines? Are they lines? Are they Are they Are there? Does it have an equal sign? My question mark. Does it have an equal sign? Okay, remember that I'm now going to ask you to choose a close-ended question and change it into an open-ended question, please. That's open. No. Why the equal sign? Are they, are they equal? Well, and the other part is that we can do it and you can cut that out. When you prioritize your questions, I want you to choose the three questions you want or need to investigate further. So as you go through and read the questions, I will give you a little extra time to talk about any, but I need you to choose three. How are you going to show me that you choose them? Okay, we're going to star them today. Please star the three priority questions, the questions you want or need to investigate further. No, Why is it on a paper? Um. So which ones are we going to star? Someone had said to me a while back, well, don't the students just choose their own questions because they think theirs are the most important? And I've never seen that. They always sort of talk through the questions. Why are there numbers? How is it equal? I'm going to ask you to share the questions you changed from open to closed and the question you changed from closed to open, as well as your three priority questions. The closed one was, are they equal? And the open one is, why are they equal? Why are they lines? And we changed it into, are they lines? Closed to open was, it, it, is it equal? Why is it equal? All right, three priority questions, please. <laughs> why are there equal, equal signs? signs? What are fractions? Okay. Why are there 24 thunder, sim thunder symbols? How can we use it every day? Why are some of them shaded and some are not? In the next steps, we take the priority questions to a whole class lesson and we go through and see which ones we can answer. Our next steps will be um, just to talk about what I will do with those questions or how we will answer those questions. We're not going to answer them today. Last step in our process is to reflect. I want you to think about the process today of the question formulation technique. I'm going to ask you to write on this card your reflection. Your reflection might be something you learned about the question focus or about math or about fractions today. Your reflection might be something you learned about working together in your group.
Today's reflection is going to be about what they may have learned from listening to someone else in their group. But sometimes when they reflect, I just ask, you know, what have you learned or what questions do you still have that are not priority questions or what strikes you as something that is really important that you've heard today. And sometimes it's about the process. So what have you learned from your process today in working together as a group? It gives the students a chance to basically learn for themselves and teaching themselves and being able to have group discussion and being able to take control of their own education. It's fun because we get to come up with a lot of ideas. When people ask questions, it's helping other people learn. It's awesome because you won't get bored of working alone and you're gonna, and you're gonna have more help than you usually do. What I love to see in some of the reflections is that they learned from each other. Yeah, this is like a community, like working all together. Many of the groups had students who were able to explain not only how they were equal, but could also articulate why they were equal and how they, were, they could make them equivalent. For the most part, everyone was really engaged and I can now see what, what groupings I need to put together.